three-dimensional bond line structures. Here's a Lewis structure for 2-butanol. We number the carbons 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, carbon 2 is the interesting part. All of the carbons have four bonds, but carbon 2 has heteroatoms bonded to it. So, this condensed structure could actually represent one of two different optical isomers. So remember that the steric number here equals 4, and even though we draw these four different groups as pointing to the corners of a square, in three dimensions they actually point to the corners of a tetrahedron. And a tetrahedron is not a two-dimensional object, it's a three-dimensional object. Thus, we need to employ some tricks of perspective to draw it on a two-dimensional surface, namely our paper. So really, we need to draw this differently, and we need to, um, we need to introduce some new uh, notation. So here is our 3D bond notation. In the first case, we have a flat bond. That means that the bond between X and A is in the plane of the paper. The second bond is what's called a wedge. And this means that the A is coming toward you. The atom at the fat end of the wedge is coming toward you. The third type of bond is called a dash, and in this case, Atom A at the fat end of the dash is going away from you, or down below the plane of the paper. Thus, to draw this as being tetrahedral, with our central carbon, we could put atom D on the wedge, atom A on the dash, group C and group B, in the plane. And now the peripheral groups all point toward the corners of a tetrahedron, but this could also mean switching the wedge and the dash. And we don't know which is which from the Lewis structure. So we really do need to specify using these 3D bonds. It makes a big difference. Going back to our 2-butanol, one way we could draw it is like this, with the methyl group on the dash, and then the H on a wedge, have the hydroxyl in the apical position, and then the ethyl group going down and to the right. Can you draw the other optical isomer that comes from this Lewis structure? Pause and draw it. So here's my answer. We could switch the H and the CH3. Now the H is on the dash going away from us, and the methyl group is coming toward us. and we've left the ethyl group and the hydroxyl group alone. So now when it comes to bond line structures, the bond line structure of 2-butanol looks like this. Right, so here's your methyl group, here's your ethyl group, Here is your hydroxyl, which I don't need to see, and the H is implied. Now, which is which? In other words, we could draw our bond line structure with the hydroxyl group on a wedge, or we could draw our bond line structure with the hydroxyl group 
on a dash. Which one of these two represents this? Pause and circle one. So here's how you solve this. So first of all, to get the zigzag, we need to be looking at this molecule kind of from an angle up here. So that we have our CH3 group and then our CH2, CH3 all in the same plane, which means rotating the molecule uh, 90 degrees to the left and then rotating it downward. And then you can see the hydroxyl group will be closer to our eye, so the hydroxyl group is on a wedge. So that means that this uh, Lewis structure is represented by the other bond line structure. Namely, we're going to look at this molecule, kind of imagine putting your eye down here, and now you'll see that the hydrogen is on the wedge when you make your backbone. The hydrogen is coming toward you, and so the hydroxyl group is going away from you. So that's a very important skill, and you guys should practice the heck out of it.